I think uh, this experience has been uh, tremendous for me. Uh, I come with a back. I come to it with a background in forestry, so having the opportunity to expand my uh, breadth of understanding of the world of biodiversity has been great for me. And the main focus of the research that I did in India was trying to understand how farmers and plant breeders access uh, germplasm collections in gene banks. So I was working with uh, the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, which is the National Gene Bank of India, and also with ICRASAT, which is another sister CGIR center that's uh, headquartered in Hyderabad, India. We uh, targeted uh, a pearl millet. Pearl millet is a uh, crop that's very important in India. It's a uh, semi-arid crop that's grown particularly in western Rajasthan and um, it's very important for uh, consumption, household consumption. And uh, it's highly nutritious, it has more protein than wheat or rice and also has high amounts of iron. So it's very important in the diet of the local people in India. The main issue here is um, one where uh, there's many varieties available. India's seed system is very well developed, but um, some of those varieties that are being released to farmers are not exactly suited to the environment that they're growing uh, pearl millet in. It's, uh, that also has something to do with some of the replacement that's going on because of new and improved varieties which aren't necessarily suited to the environment. So the, the problem there is that uh, when, when, when um, breeders make selections, they basically uh, narrow down the genetic base and they're selecting for certain traits. When they select for certain traits, they lose out on others. And hybrids, while they are very productive, in fact, probably even more productive in an, what I call an improved environment, a controlled environment where there's access to irrigation, fertilizers, mechanization on farm, then those varieties are very productive and useful. But one of the problems we see is that in Rajasthan particularly, where the vast majority of pearl millet production is being carried out, the majority of those farmers, probably upwards of 90%, are farming in unimproved conditions, in rain-fed conditions, where drought is a common occurrence and uh, fertilizers are very difficult to access because of the cost. So in, in, under those conditions, under those marginal conditions, these land races or traditional varieties are, have been proven by scientific studies to be more productive. Basically, they provide certain values that hybrid varieties don't provide. They are very drought tolerant. They, um, they also have certain consumption characteristics, such as the grain is sweeter, and, um, and also they produce quite a bit more fodder. These are taller plants, so these are very important characteristics to think about as far as fodder producing uh, varieties, because uh, livestock is an important uh, component of the agricultural systems in Rajasthan. In fact, through livestock, uh, many of these farmers and the, the households, uh, they, they receive the majority of their protein through the production of milk and cheese and, and yogurt and things like that. The things that we tried to explore were uh, mechanisms to bringing the varieties that gene banks have to the farmers. And right now, that's something that has not been pioneered before. What we hope to do is to show uh, the, the, commu the scientific community at large that these land races do have value. And one of the mechanisms that we used was a farmer's field day where we grew 20 some varieties of pearl millet together actually under farmers type conditions without any supplementary irrigation or fertilizer and so the farmers could have a look at the varieties and they could see which ones produced well and which ones that they they had uh, they desired on their farms so that was one way that we tried to show people the the value that land races had and that farmers actually preferred these varieties but I think, you know, the main thing is to kind of open up a dialogue and to have cre increase awareness among not only farmers but also the scientists who are involved in the production of new varieties. I think that there's a lack of uh, awareness on both sides of the equation. And I would say simply put is what you need to do is you need to look at what farmers are asking for, and we've done that in our research, and then bring it to the gene bank and say, okay, well, these varieties, they exist in the gene bank. So let's target some of these varieties and bring them out and grow them together with the hybrid varieties and see how farmers are interacting with them, what their preferences are, and what benefits are, are accruing through the cultivation of both of them. You know, in the future we perceive that there will be increasing scarcity of water, uh, fossil fuel inputs, the cost of fossil fuel inputs will be increasing, um, pest and climate regimes will be changing. And um, that really means that um, the agricultural systems, that the foundation of agricultural systems will need to be built on different, uh, on a different background. So I think agrobiodiversity and plant genetic resources provide that foundation. And that's something that we really need to tap into in order to meet the, the coming challenges of agricultural um, uh, production. Yeah.